Hey guys, one of the most common questions I get nearly every single day is how do I choose investments in my Plan 3 retirement account? So in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into your Plan 3 retirement investments so you can get a better idea of what investment options you have available to you. And I'm going to show you a rule that I use when selecting a portfolio to make sure you're not taking on too much risk. Welcome back to all of my subscribers. And if you haven't done so yet, down below, hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any future updates like this on your retirement benefits or any other financial tips and ideas I throw your way. So in the Plan 3 Retirement Account, there's a few different investment options you're actually allowed to choose from. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to deal with investments and they just kind of have money sit there, look at their account once a month, it goes up great, if not, oh well. Um, but as you get closer to retirement, it's really important to start looking at things a little bit closely because as your time horizon gets shorter, you're not going to have much time to make up for any losses. So when you're looking to these investment options, we want to make sure we're taking a safer approach to protect the money we have built up and worked so hard for over our career. So if you're not into picking your own investments, that's okay. I'm going to show you an easy way on how to choose it. And if you need help, give us a call and we'll be happy to help you with that as well. So now I'll actually flip over to my screen and go to the Plan 3 website and walk you through it. All right, so here I am on the DRS uh, Plan 3 investment website. Uh, so I'll drop the link in the description below so you guys can go to this page as well. Uh, so today we're just going to walk through the different investment options you have as a Plan 3 member. So when it comes to the investment side of Plan 3, your money is going to be on either one or two programs, or maybe you can have it in both. But basically there's the WSIB program, which everybody got defaulted to if you started before July of 2011. If you start working after July 2011, you're on the self-directed investment side. So the WSIB only has one fund in it. It's the total allocation portfolio, and it's typically pretty aggressive. So oftentimes, as you get close to retirement, you want to scale back your risk. It makes a lot of sense to actually leave this side and go into the self-directed side because you can scale back your risk level by choosing safer investment options. Also, the benefit of being on the self-directed side is when it comes to your retirement and actually accessing your money or if you want to transfer to a different institution, money on the self-directed side usually gets transferred in one to two weeks, so pretty normal here. The TAP side is pretty illiquid because this fund is actually designed to be transferred into the TAP annuity, and we're not going to go into that today. Uh, but this fund here, it's pretty liquid and takes some two months or so before you can get your money. So it's not the most liquid investment to have. So today we're going to spend most of our time here on the self-directed program. So there's two, they say there's two sides to it, uh, one step and their build and monitor. So what most of our clients do is we're on this side here. We handpick our own investment options. And the reason being is while you can choose from this one step target funds, oftentimes they have a little bit too much risk still in them. Uh, and we'll go look at the performance here in a bit, but for us, we like to scale back a risk a lot lower than what the target date funds uh, do for you. So if you want to do it yourself, yeah, this might be a, an okay option, but more often than not, we like hands picking from this list here. So all these lists are ordered in degree of risk. So the short-term investment fund is going to be the least amount of risk associated with it, and the emerging market is going to have the most amount of risk associated with it. So when you're looking at it and you want to pick something a little bit safer, you want to stay on the top side of these plans here. All right, so now let's just keep scrolling down. We'll get to the performance section. And we'll stop right here. So a quick note, as far as investment advice, and this is where I see a lot of people get it wrong or have some kind of misunderstanding, and it says it right here. While the DRS and Plan 3 Record Keeper can provide you with information about investments, they cannot offer investment advice. So oftentimes I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm just going to you know, call the state for those advice or my school district is going to handle my investments for me. That's not the case. It says it right here, black and white. So if you need help choosing your investment lineup, whether it's plan three or anything else, you want to make sure you're going to be talking to a financial advisor. And that's what they recommend right here. So don't call the state for investment advice because they can't give it to you. So enough with that. Let's go down here. So this is the investment performance. They only report on a quarterly basis. So the last quarter that ended was March 31st. I'm doing this video towards the end of May. So it's still gonna be another month before this is updated and the market has recovered much since this time. So if you look at here, this is the lineup for uh, what they said, the one step or this is just the targeted funds. So again, it's ordered from lowest risk to highest risk. It looks like a lot of numbers on the screen, but really what it is, it's anything in this kind of teal or gray shaded area 
is the actual investment fund. Anything in the white is your benchmarks. That's kind of what they're targeting or trying to mimic. So you can see even their safest fund listed here still lost over 7% during that market correction. And to me, that's a little bit too much risk if you're trying to be really, really safe. So this is kind of why I said uh, we don't really don't care too much for these targeted funds. Uh, so you can see even you know the 2020 funds. So if you're tying this year and all your money in it, you'd have lost you know 15% during that collapse. Well, it's a lot better than losing the 30%. It's still quite a bit of risk, and it might take some time to get back to even. So if we scroll down here, we're actually going to take a look at the other ones so right here. So this is the self-directed. So we like this side, again, because we can kind of control the risk level a little bit more. You see the short-term fund, the safest option here, gained 0.39, a lot better than losing nearly 8%. Even the bond fund only down a little under 2%, so much safer to be on this side here. And you keep scrolling down, you can see we have the emerging market index, which is going to be the riskiest side. So most people are going to be staying on the upper half of this level here. And so when you're looking at this list and trying to decide which fund should I be selecting or where should I put my money, a lot of people just go off the investments. They look at either the 5 or the 10. They say, hey, this one has the highest performance. I'm going to put all my money in this fund here. Now that's one strategy you could use, but should things go south, you can see that can quickly turn around on you. So the way you want to be selecting this is you want to use something called the rule of 100. And what the rule of 100 is, is you simply take 100 minus your age, and that's going to tell you exactly how much risk you should be taking. All of these investment options can actually be classified into a few different funds. So this one is what we call, what we call a cash. And then you have bonds or fixed income, so a little bit safer. And then down here you have equities. So equities are basically stock markets. They're going to rise and fall with the market exactly. So there's three different categories here. The social responsible, you can kind of see here in the benchmark, it's actually a mix. It's 55% equity, 45% bond. So it's kind of a hybrid or a split between the two. So you can see it did worse than the bond, but a little bit better than the US large cap when the markets fall. So it's kind of right in the middle there. So when you're using the rule of 100, you start off with 100, let's say you're 60 years old, we're going to take away 60, we're left with 40. So 40, 40 or 40% is how much money we should still be having in the equity side. So no more than 40% of your money should be in this lower half. So you have your 40 put into either one of these, or you can kind of split it out in 10% of all of them. The choice is yours. Typically, I just say stay out of the emerging market fund because it has a pretty you know, significant side of risk, small caps, they have a lot of risk and markets down. You can see they're the worst performing sector. So a lot of times we're staying between you know the US large or the global equity index funds when we're dealing strictly with equity. So what that also means is the other 60% should be in safer funds. So the 60% should be done on this top path here. So you can put it in any one of these three funds and you'd be in pretty good shape. Remember that social responsible, it's kind of a split, so it still does it still has some equity exposure to it. So I wouldn't put too much money into that. You could even put in some of your that 40% portion into this as well. If you're really trying to scale back your risk, then you can keep that other 60% really in safer funds. Because you gotta remember that when you're coming closer to retirement, it's all about preservation, not trying to double trip them anymore. So you gotta get into the new mindset. I'm not trying to get 10 plus percent a year in growth. I'm retiring in one, two or three years. I need to make sure my money is there. That's the most important part of this time. So it really is a mind shift and a new way of thinking. And you have to be able to put your money into here and be okay if you know the market does go up you know, 20, 30%. I'm not gonna get it all, but I am gonna be getting a safe or a decent rate of return. And that's really what I care about because I wanna make sure this money's gonna be there for me in retirement to generate the income that I need, right? So going back to the example of using the rule of 100, if you're 60, you'd have 40% split up in equities down here and you'd have the other 60% split in these you know, top two sections here. So that's the rule that we like to use when we're selecting investment options or building portfolios for people in the Plan 3 system. If you found some value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. If you want to know more about how your Plan 3 works, check out this video I did over here. I'll see you guys next week, and remember that your future depends on what you do today.